find the focal length to a distant object. Yes. Okay. Um, so we don't have a lens holder, but we do have these little... Two lenses. We have a thick lens and a thin lens. Ah, I see. So here's the thick one. Okay. Here's the... Here's a thin one. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you can see. So I think I'm holding a thin guy. one. Yeah. 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 See, here's a thick one. I don't know if we can share these around. Sure. It's like, oh, oh, there's a thick one. Can there's I try that? Thick one. Are they all... I like they're all different. Oh, wait, that looks like two. Yeah, that one's got... That's a double. It's already been put together. Yeah, yeah. There we go. No. No. <laughs> And then yeah. Oh, there's our light source. <laughs> and here's our screen. You should you should be able to see on either side. Where did you go to school? Both grad both undergrad and high school. Wow. That's a thin one. Oh, oh, there's my uh there's my I have a butterfly upside down. I don't know if it's backwards because it's a symmetric object. Yeah. <laughs> but we could measure the focal length if I had a third hand. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's quite a bit better. But you're right, the depth of field is a lot worse on the go. thick lens. And it's upside down. And it's also upside down, yep. And thick lens has a much shorter focal length. So there you go. About 77 centimeters ish. Thank you. There's my, there's my little. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Yep, the field is much better. Now I've got it figured out. Yeah. <laughs> Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up oh, there. Oh no, uh, person. Yeah. Ah. Can, the, can the person who's sitting facing us? Yeah. There's our upside down butterfly. And the focal length. 19 centimeters. Okay. So, okay. yeah, good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We asked each researcher, we asked each researcher to do it about once a month. Okay. And um, so Jolene has done it about six times with us so far. We've had uh, about 25 of them so far. We have another one tomorrow, like at museum. Started back in March. Since, since I'm in Washington, I try to do them in person when I can. Uh, uh, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, which is great. Definitely not the focus. So if you're in the D.C. area, how often does this go on? Uh, usually about four or five times a month. Wow, I'm trying, okay. I'm trying to expand it. So I'm hoping to get up to the point where we have about eight a month. Cool. So this one is meteorite or meteor wrong Chinese <laughs> lava space rock. Mm, okay. First of all, uh, rocks from outer space have to come through our atmosphere. Yeah. So they have to be pretty strong. So rocks that have lots of holes in them are yeah. not usually from outer space. So if okay. you take a look at all these rocks, some of them are going to have holes, and those would not be the ones. Sorry, this is. Oh, this is. Is this? Mm, I don't know. What has holes? holes. Oh, ah. this one has holes. Yeah. yeah it's got a lot of holes in it. Yeah. This, this is a like lava rock, actually. So igneous, yeah. Common. Exactly. All right, so, so that's, that's earth rock. Earth rock. Gotcha. Okay, so we can start there. So they're also, when they come through the atmosphere, they get this dark crust on them. Yeah. So anything that's light in color is probably not a Okay, so I would say that's pretty light in color. <laughs> that's some kind of chalky... 
Yeah, that's sure what that is. Supports. I used to be better at this, and I don't suppose this came through <laughs> the atmosphere as well. No, no, it's no. too shiny. Far too shiny. <laughs> so our next clue comes because meteorites are come from most come from the asteroid belt. Yes. So there's two different kinds, main, mainly two different kinds of meteorites: stony meteorites and iron meteorites. Yeah. So um, both of these, let's see. <laughs> the stony meteorites come from small asteroids that never differentiate. So, mm -hmm. with, with really big um, asteroids, the iron falls to the center yeah. and forms a core. And so, you've got a crust and a mantle and a core like Earth does. But stony meteorites come from small bodies that oh. never get big enough to have a core. So, this is going to give us some yeah, more clues. Sure. Both of these have metal in them. Lot, you know, in our solar system, the asteroid belt and all the planets do have lots of metal in them. And metal is heavy. <laughs> meteorites are heavy. <laughs> okay. This is an easy way of explaining it. So, remove so. any lightweight rocks. Those are going to tend to be Earth rocks. This feels, I don't know. What's really light? I don't know. <laughs> I guess this one's really light. That one's pretty light. What is that? Is that a fossil? <laughs> okay. Turtle scoot. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. There's no tur no space turtles yet. <laughs> no, no space. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No real space turtles. Okay. So now we're going to be forced to use tools. Um, Woohoo! It's not just any metal in there. It's actually iron. Yeah. Meteorites have iron in them. And what attracts, uh, or what, yeah, attracted by iron. Magnets! Yeah, a magnet. All right. So see if any of those. Oh. Yep. <laughs> okay, all right. Ah. No. Okay. Okay. So, so these are magnetic. Definitely attracted to magnets. Yeah. All right, so we can put those in the maybe think those, you know, they think they these are the meteorite. Kind of okay. Criteria. And how about these over here? Oh, what gosh. Is there this any? One's... Is there like a tiny bit, maybe? Oh, this one just attracted a tiny bit. Oh. It would be a really special detective to find that one because it's not much. Oh, yeah. I can yeah. like barely feel it pulling. Yep, exactly. And this one, nothing. Uh, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so you did great. Very good. So first, we're going to pick out the iron meteorite. That's yeah. this one here. Uh, this I'm got a picture here of the Ooh. biggest one in Namibia. It's um, oh yeah, the Hoba meteorite. It's the largest one ever found. Um, and that is an iron meteorite that comes from Very the cool. center of an old asteroid. Um, and then we've got the stony meteorite. Hey, this one here yeah. is the stony meteorite. Now. It doesn't, it's not as attracted as strongly to the magnet because it doesn't have as much metal. This one's mostly just iron and nickel. Yeah. This has got um, metal grains in it. You can see, this is a piece that's been sliced open. You can see, there's a um, there we go. Oh, magnifying thank glass you. if you want that. Little chondrules in there and metal bit, grains. Right? Yeah. Sometimes it takes a there bright light to be able to see the flashy. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one here is a trickster. This is a lodestone. Oh, okay. This is an earth rock. Yeah. And a lot of people, when they're looking for meteorites, they find lodestones or slag. Yeah, slag was a big one when I was in college. They'd bring it over. There's no way to tell unless you do some further testing. Although yeah. you could pretty much look at this one and Back home, guess that it's also, not. Where there was also pig iron in the river. Yes, exactly. It's like really <laughs> look at this. It's all smooth. <laughs> Like it's, metal, yeah. yeah, and it's it's attracted to a magnet. It's in it. It's yep. like it totally looks like one. Totally. <laughs> There's one other special one that you yeah. didn't find. Okay. Here. Um, this is actually a tektite, and tektites occur when large impacts, large pieces of oh, meteorite, yeah. hit the Earth, and they're so big that they create, say, a, an impact crater, mm -hmm. and that crater, all if it hits sand and rock, that sand and rock heat up, yeah. heat up, and when you heat sand enough, it becomes glass. Yeah. So this yeah. is a piece of glass that's been spewed out from an impact. So it's not from outer space, but it's been to outer space. It's probably so what is most it? likely been this is the like not. Here? I know. <laughs> well, so just yes. put it on the on the border, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, and that's an earth rock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> so there are other types of meteorites too yeah. that aren't shown here, but these are the two most common. I sure. think ninety some percent of everything you'll find. Um, and if you're going looking for meteorites, a stream bed is not the place. No. Right. Yeah, that <laughs> would be a little. Well, there are two meteorites in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I think it's this one and oh, wow. this one here. 
and there's a little key right here. Oh, yes, yeah. you are actually meteorites, but you would never know because there's so many yeah. rocks. If you want to go looking for meteorites, you want to go to a glacier or a desert or somewhere yeah. that's got yeah. no other rocks around. Right. A really cloud field is actually Antarctica is a great place, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how does someone get their hands on a kit like this? So these kits are designed for amateur astronomers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're designed to be very simple to use at outreach events or mm -hmm. at the telescope, depending. A lot of them have uh, observing cards that come with them that talk sure. about what you can see in the telescope that relates to this. They, they usually ship them with um, whatever the clubs that are members of the Night Sky Network. Yeah. Then they register a couple of events that I do with the public. Mm -hmm. and so then we'll ship them out. Okay. We always get feedback and everything. Yeah. We're always updating yeah. Them too. Exactly. And there's also on the Night Sky Network uh, homepage, we also have the resources page. And right. you can actually, everything that's here, uh -huh. you can download well, it. Well, pretty much, you can't download the meteors, but you can look, <laughs> you know, like, get like the actual like, that would be cool. and like the yeah. maps and all the yeah, yeah. stuff. And like everything we get for the most part is like um, something you can like get at Michael's or a scientific hobby store. Right, too. right, right. So you can put it together yourself, yeah. Especially because it's sort of like, you know, it goes out of the field, you know, yeah. oh, it breaks, you know, just, okay, it's like a dollar to fix. Yeah. <laughs> It's in like your junk drawer. Yeah, awesome, awesome. These, so the Night Sky Network is a group of over 425 astronomy clubs. Mm -hmm. um, they get these kits for free. We have 11 of them, uh, ranging from supernova to solar system. Yeah. Uh, Extra solar planet. And there are more coming out all the time. We have uh -huh. two in the works right now. Oh, cool. So, Very cool. Yeah. Excellent. A lot of good uh, outreach. A lot of them will have like uh, observing sheets. Yeah, there. yeah. Show this one's got Galileo's observations uh, and a place for them to show and what you might expect to see in a telescope. Cool. Uh, so yeah. Cool. Lots and lots of activities. Dozens, I guess. Thank you. Cool. Yeah.